In this session, I will show you some fundamental concepts using the XPath and CSS Selector. We are going to use Selectors Hub. It is a tool that allows us to create our own values and copy some generated values. I find this tool as a benefit for locating elements, especially elements located inside of an SVG tag and elements located inside of an iframe. The agenda is to install Selectors Hub, compare Selectors Hub with our browser's developer tools feature, locate an element inside of an iframe, locate an element inside of a shadow dome, and locate an element inside of an SVG tag. The application that we can download or install is located inside selectorshub.com. So first, we click the install button inside this free XPad plugin box. This page explains how to start using Selectors Hub. If we scroll down, we see it supports Shadow Dome, Nested Shadow Domes, iFrame, Nested iFrames, SVG Elements, Dynamic Dropdown, Sub Menu, and Dynamic Invisible Elements. I already have Selectors Hub. So let's go to this practice page. Right click the application, then select inspect. To use Selectors Hub, we select this menu icon and we see options. Then choose Selectors Hub. And this here portion is the Selectors Hub feature. Now let's compare developer tools feature to Selectors Hub. In the dome, an A tag represents a hyperlink. In the find feature, we see the placeholder says find by string, selector, or XPath. Therefore, it will return strings as well as selectors or XPath. If we type two forward slashes A, we see 91 results, but look what's highlighted yellow in the dome. It's not an A tag but a string with two forward slashes, A. To find the link element, we need to cycle the results. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of 91 finally shows a hyperlink with an A tag. Now for Selectors Hub, it has a placeholder that says, Write and verify XPath and CSS selectors. Here, let's write the same value. Two forward slashes A, then enter. We see it shows 84 elements. To see all 84 elements, then turn off the auto-generate selectors. Press enter in the search box, and each element shows up. That's accurate if you only want to return the number of links in a web page. Next is locate an element in an iframe. Inspect this first crush field. It has an input tag, ID attributes with an ID value of INP underscore val. With XPath or CSS selector, we will see the same number of results. With XPath, let's write two forward slashes, input, square brackets, at ID equals, two singular quotes. Within the quotes, let's add the IP, ID value of INP underscore val. We see two results. Now, let's use the CSS selector way of finding the value. Hashtag, which is a shortcut for ID, then the value of INP underscore val. And we still see two results. The first element is located under the submit button. The second element, however, is located under memory test header. One of these elements is located inside of an iframe. At this point, 
it's difficult to know which element is located inside of an iframe. I sometimes I notice an element is located in the iframe by looking at the bread clump or scrolling up the dome. Other times I notice an element is located inside of an iframe after executing my test, then the test failed. That's when I recognize the element is located inside of an iframe. Let's inspect the same element and see how selectors hub show us if it's in the iframe or not. Inspect, go to first crush. Let's also bring up selectors hub. You know what? Let's start just by writing the value in because we can do that also. IMP underscore val, hit enter. And we see one element is matching. That's different from developer tools because developer tools showed us two elements, but this shows one element. It shows one element because one element is not in the iframe. Another element is within the iframe. Let's inspect the other element under memory test. It shows it is located in an iframe because we see a tag here that says inside iframe. Let's turn back on this auto generated and we see right here a note that says the element is inside iframe. Plus it gives us a tip. Switch inside iframe to access through automation. I like that and it helps a lot because up front it tells us it's located inside of an iframe. Let's inspect some more elements on this page. I'm going to inspect the username field. This username field is located inside of an input tag with an ID value of KILS. For XPath, I'm going to write input square brackets at ID equals kills. It does not show up, show zero results. Hashtag and the value, and it still does not show up. Let's see why it does not show up. I'm going to select this hub. It does not show up because it's inside of a shadow dome with the note that says alert. The element is inside of a shadow dome. That's the difference with selectors hub. If it's in a shadow dome, it lets us know. Plus, it can locate a shadow dome element by writing the same information. And it shows one element is matching. That's why I like selectors hub because it can locate elements inside of a shadow dome. When I write the same value, the SVG element is challenging in the dome because SVG is very difficult because we cannot find it the normal way of using XPath. I inspect the element and it is enabled background. You see it's SVG tag, two forward slashes, SVG, did not find the element. I'm going to copy the element like some people do. Copy the XPath value. And you will see how it still does not find the element. Copy, copy XPath. And I'm going to paste the value. And it does not show up. If I go to Selectors Hub and paste that same value, it does not show up. Even if I write two forward slashes SVG, it does not show up. However, if I inspect it again, let's see what it shows us. It provides some generated values that we can copy. I'm going to copy this first or the second value, paste it, and it shows us one element is matching. We can even copy another one, like this second one or this fourth one, and it will show us a value. I wanted to take this time to show you Selectors Hub because it's something we can add to our automation process to help us find elements. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next session.